Welcome to the seventh episode of JWST and the Big Bang Never Happened debate. Now, in this episode, once again, I'm replying to something on the web. Now, of course, if I replied to everything on the web that was wrong about cosmology or science in general, I wouldn't have time to do anything else. But sometimes it's important to reply to things that are so wrong and so wrong in such important ways that they really tend to destroy people's concept of what science really is. In this case, it's something that has been said by many people, but was said pretty concisely by Dr. Becky. So let's first listen to what she has to say. One of the best feelings as a scientist is when new observations or new data show the complete opposite of what's been predicted by the best models we have for what is going on. Now, people who have watched my videos probably have heard me say that people don't like to be proven wrong and that scientists, without exception, are all people. But here's Dr. Becky saying the opposite, that the best feeling a scientist has is when their theories are proven absolutely, completely wrong. Well, that statement is absolutely and completely wrong. I mean, let's look at it. Obviously, Dr. Becky is talking about her own feelings, and, well, we'll give her the benefit of the doubt. But surely we can have a little skepticism that she's such an unusual person that, let's say, when she was playing a game of chess and made a blunder and somebody just checkmated her, she'd say, wow, that's so exciting, I made such a stupid move. Or, since we're talking about science, when she was studying at school and she made a mistake on an important test, well, maybe that never happened, but let's say it did, and she got a bad grade and she said, wow, I really screwed up on that test. <laughs> It's so exciting. We could have a little skepticism about that, but of course it does take all types. But that's not what Dr. Becky was saying, or it's not the only thing, because she was talking explicitly not about herself, but about scientists. That the best feeling for scientists is to have their theory proven wrong. And that is what's completely wrong. Now, sometimes it seems, maybe pretty often these days, that Dr. Becky and a lot of Big Bang cosmologists treat science as if it's some sort of strange game. A game when maybe being proven wrong gives you points. But science isn't a game. Science is a matter of life and death. It is today, and it always has been. There is no way that we could have eight billion human beings living here on planet Earth without science being right about innumerable things, without having fertilizers that we can produce out of thin air, without having huge supplies of energy and the electricity that's produced by that energy without having the ability to move through technological means goods around the world cheaply, without having a communication system that can organize that complex global system of mass production, without antibiotics, without all of these things that are produced by the correct predictions of science, we wouldn't have a population of 8 billion or anything like that. And that isn't only tr true today when science is done by people we call scientists. It's always been the case, long before there were anybody called scientists or there was anything called science. 
human beings were doing science. When our ancestor told fellow villagers, if you eat a mushroom that looks like this, you'll join our ancestors. I know, because I had a tiny piece and it made me really sick. But if you eat a mushroom that looks like this, you can make good soup out of it. Those ancestors were using the scientific method to improve their lives and their chances of survival. Because what science is, is generalizations based on observation of nature that allow us to correctly predict what happens in given circumstances. And that ability to correctly predict the future, to correctly predict if I do this, this will happen, that is the basis of human survival. I mean, if we look at science today, we try and apply Dr. Becky's attitude to, let's say, the biomedical sciences. Does she really expect a scenario like this, in which a biomedical scientist says, well, our best theories said that this vaccine would cure this or prevent this disease, but we gave the vaccine to 100 people and they all died. Now, this is a really exciting contradiction of our hypothesis. I mean, would Dr. Becky really think that her colleagues would express such an inhuman emotion? I don't think so. But she's expressed an idea of science and of scientists being happy to be proven wrong, which if believed by the de general public, would have deadly consequences. Because if people believe that scientists really don't care about being right, that they're just as excited or even more excited about being proven wrong, they won't trust what scientists say based on the observations of nature, based on experiment and research. And they'll say, well, this vaccine might as easily kill me as prevent these diseases. And after all, that's what millions of people did say during the pandemic. And many, many people unnecessarily died because they didn't trust what scientists said. They didn't trust that for the vast majority of scientists, science is about making right predictions. And the best feeling in science, trust me, is when you work hard and develop a theory, a model of some phenomena based on previous observations, and you prove that theory correct by experiments in the laboratory or observations of nature. That's a great feeling. When you do all that work, creating your pet theory, and observations don't agree with what's predicted, that's not a great feeling. That's a bad headache when you try and figure out what you did wrong. So it's absolutely, clearly, positively wrong to say that scientists get most excited when their theories are proven wrong and not right. And I think Dr. Becky probably knows a number of scientists. So the question is, why would she say something that is so clearly, absolutely, and importantly, dangerously wrong? Well, the fact of the matter is, it sort of justifies the sort of work that a lot of Big Bang cosmologists do. In Big Bang cosmology, in our videos, in our published uh, journal papers, and in many publications by our colleagues, we've been saying over and over that the vast majority of the Big Bang theories, predictions, have been proven wrong by observations. And this process is vastly accelerated by the new data from JWST and other big instruments like 
the Earth-based ALMA telescope. In the Big Bang cosmology, they've said, yes, our predictions have been proven wrong. So we tweak the theory and we make new predictions based on new data and then they're proven wrong and we tweak the theory again and that's fine. That's what they're saying, that it's fine to do science or cosmology this way. But that's not science. That's not good science. It's not the scientific method at all. If your theory consistently predicts wrong predictions, it is of the utmost important that you not tweak the theory, but you throw it away. That's what the Big Bang scientists have been unwilling to do, is to throw away a theory that's been proven wrong. Instead, they're saying, like Dr. Becky, well, it's good. It's exciting when the theory is proven wrong. Well, no, it's not. It shows that what you're doing is not science. Well, what is it? It's basically not the scientific method, but what we can call the Ptolemaic method. You all remember Ptolemy from high school, Ptolemy geocentric universe. The Ptolemaic method is based on assuming things about the universe, not based on observation, but based on something else, logic, religion, authority. Creating models based on these unchangeable assumptions and then tweaking these models with epicycles in Ptolemy's case to make the models fit the phenomenon. The problem is, since those theories produce consistently wrong predictions, they're not useful. Unlike scientific theories that you can use to make predictions that are ultimately applicable to technology, these predictions are always wrong. They're useless predictions, but they're defended because it is impossible in the Ptolemaic method to throw out the basic assumptions. In the medieval period, if you challenge the heliocentric uh, hypothesis, which by that time was endorsed by the Catholic Church, you risk being burned at the stake. Today, the consequences are lesser, but they can still be very fearsome. Because if a cosmologist at a university says, the Big Bang never happened. They might be risking their job. And this has happened. People have been fired for cosmological heresy. They might be risking their funding. And that's why, as in the Emperor's New Clothes, it's very, very dangerous to a cosmologist to say, well, this theory doesn't need tweaking. It needs to be discarded. And that's why you get from Dr. Becky and others the idea that good science or science is about proving theories wrong and tweaking them and proving them wrong and tweaking them. That's not science. To say that science is wrong, it's not only wrong, it's dead wrong. The knowledge of plasma that we gain from studying the universe helps us to achieve fusion energy in this decade. If you want a fast transition to a clean environment and a higher standard of living, fund LPP Fusion's research. The link's in the description. Share, subscribe, and get new knowledge of the cosmos at the same time.